Today we're going to continue our series on Ruby on Rails. Having set up the project in our first episode, today we look at building our first feature, which is going to be user sign up, log in, and log out. For today, these first two tasks in our backlog are going to be what we're working on. So we'll drag these into our in progress just so we kind of can visually see what we're doing here. And this is kind of a solved problem. User authentication and user signup is it's something that's basically built by every application that's ever built because for the most part you want your users to be able to save some sort of information or associate the user to some sort of information in your system. Because of this, we're not going to build this from scratch. Normally in a Rails tutorial, the first thing you do probably isn't go get a gem that solves a problem for you. But since we're taking this like it's a project, uh, this actually makes sense. We're going to build this feature by taking code that somebody else already has written and using it. There are a lot of different gems that actually solve the same problem though. So we're going to take a look at three of them and we're going to weigh the pros and cons and our requirements and figure out which one we should use. So the first one here is uh, Clearance by ThoughtBot. And this is a small gem that its entire focus is on doing email and password authentication. It doesn't do, you know, you can't log in with Facebook, you can't um, log in with Google. It's just to do email and password, and then it also sets up things like password reset. So it's it's got really good documentation, and it gives us some things for uh, some nice helper methods. But basically, every gem is going to give you these methods. It does give some nice testing overrides, which we'll probably get into later down here. But yeah, this is our the first choice we have. And this is for doing email and password, which is uh, the actual type of authentication that we're going to be doing. Devise is probably the most popular gem for doing authentication inside of Ru Ruby and Rails. Um, and it's it's big, it can do a lot of things. Um, like here's just there are 10 modules that you can use. So you can track sign in timestamps IP. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot you can there's a lot you can do with device. So it does provide views and controllers and um, extensive documentation. But like I said, it's pretty big. And then the last one we're going to look at is sorcery. Uh, sorcery is the one that I have the most experience with. And I've built numerous apps using sorcery because I like the way that it's structured. And that is, uh, it's kind of unlike the other ones, it doesn't provide you any views, it just provides you with uh, a few methods on your model and some uh, integrations into your controller. But then it does actually have a lot of those other features like you can rig it up to sign you in with Google and Facebook, but uh, by default, it just does like email password or username password kind of depends on how you want to set it. But the downside of sorcery is that it was kind of stale for a long time, nobody was working on it. And that was sort of a scare like you're like, Oh, if there are security vulner vulnerabilities, nobody's literally ever gonna update this gem. Fortunately, uh, the project did just recently move. So it's under active development. So after it's uh, got its bearings under the new uh, regime, then maybe I'll come back and use sorcery. But not today. Devise also just a little bit too big for my taste. I, I want something small. And so clearance is actually the one that we're going to go with. I really respect ThoughtBot as a kind of gem foundry, essentially. But uh, they're, they're a really reputable um, client shop that does a lot of Rails work you know, from Boston, but they're all over the world now. So we're going to take clearance for a spin. And a lot of what we're going to be doing is basically just following this readme today. So the first thing we need to do is uh, grab this clearance gem line here. And then we're going to bounce over into Atom and change our gem file. So gem clearance, and then we're going to use a pessimistic version pinning operator here. So we know it's 1.15.1 .1 is the current version. And what this tilde uh, greater than symbol does is it says match um, 1.15.1 .1 on anything, any version that is at least this, but can be higher in the last dot position. So in this case, if uh, 1.15.3 comes out, then we can do bundle update without changing our gem file at all, and it will automatically update clearance to the newest, uh, this is the bug bug patch um, dot in Semver. If we wanted it to take any minor version, we would just get rid of this 
And then if we uh, ran bundle update, this could go up until it would basically go until it hit 2.0 and then it would stop. We are going to change these quotes just to be consistent. Save that. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to install a gem. So we, we currently have our, um, our application running. The thing is, is you need to install the gem and then restart the server in order for the gem to be picked up. But we can't do that while it's running. So what we actually have to do is we have to do docker compose stop. And then I chain these together a lot. So it's docker compose build and docker compose up and then redaemonize them. And this will go off and it will uh, stop our containers, obviously, but it will rebuild our image. And remember that we install all of our gems before we actually load our code into the image so that uh, it can cache that stuff for us. So this will store it so that, you know, next time we want to restart a container, it's already going to have an image built that has all of our gems pre-built. But every time you install a new gem into your gem file or update your gems, you need to do this. All right, that's finished running. Now we're gonna run through the rest of the steps that Clearance uh, sort of gives us to go over. So if we look at this, it has a generator, which we haven't used any Rails generators yet, um, but this will go off and it says right here what it's gonna do. It's gonna set up a user for us, gonna set up our application controller to use their controller module, and then give us a config file and create the migration for us if we don't already have one. So this is actually going to do a lot of work for us because we don't have any real code inside of our application yet. So it will actually create our user table and our user model and go from there. So we have to run this inside of our container though. So if we docker compose run dash dash rm app bash, this will give us a container that'll go away when we're done. And we can run rake, oh no, it's rails, sorry. Rails generate clearance install. Okay, prints out some other stuff to us f for doing emails, um, which we're not going to send any emails in local development, but this would actually be what you do uh, for that. And maybe we'll set this up too, but yeah, the bigger thing for us is actually going to be this view stuff here, which is going to be something that most applications are going to want. You're going to want to show a sign in and sign out button. So we're going to actually copy this and then we're going to put this in our layout. So if you come into app views, layouts, and then application HTML, this is the this is the wrapper around all of your views. Each controller action will say like, this is the main view that I'm gonna render, but everything in this layout or whatever layout that a view calls is always going to be rendered. So we always want there to be the, the sign in and sign out buttons. While we're in here, we're gonna change the HTML a little bit, create a section for the body, And then we'll move this div into there too. And then up here we'll have a header. The styling's pretty jacked up. So if we select all of this stuff, we go to edit, lines, auto indent, hopefully it'll fix it for us. Ah, there we go. Good deal. Minus these, these look wrong. Okay, before we actually go and run this stuff, let's take a look at what else it created for us. So if we go into DB and migrate, you'll see that it created a file. And this is a migration that will create our users table and set up the fields that clearance is expecting. So email, encrypted password, confirmation token, and remember token. This is for um, doing email confirmation when you sign up and uh, having a remember me token so you can stay logged in for longer. It also created for us an initializer for clearance. And there are quite a few uh, flags that you can set inside of here, but you don't really need to set them actually before we get started. So as we continue working with our application, we'll likely come in here and customize some things, but right now we don't really need to. And lastly, we have a user model, and it uh, it's pretty simple. So it sets up our user, which this maps directly to the table that's created in our migration. So the user model maps to the user's table, and then it inherits from application record, which if you're familiar with older versions of Rails, this would be application or um, active record base. Application record's a new thing in Rails 5 that actually itself 
uh, inherits from Active Record Base and sets some things. But this just follows the same pattern, like you have an application controller and uh, and you don't have all of your individual controllers inherit from action controller base. So the other thing it gives us in here is include clearance user, which this is a module that includes methods that uh, would likely be useful on user. And maybe sometime we'll dig into this and look a little deeper. Okay, so back here, if we run the last step here, which is rake db migrate, that created our table for us. So now we can actually go in and create user records. We need to exit this. And since there was that initializer involved, we need to stop our application and spin it back up. Okay, if we take a look at the routes in our application, there are a few different ways we can do that, but I'm going to do it with Docker Compose. Um, and I will use run dash dash rm app rake routes. Okay, there's a lot of this clearance, password, clearance session. So it sets up multiple controllers that it has, that it uses, and then it registers those as routes inside of our application. Clearance allows you to actually configure these um, and overwrite this stuff, but by default, it uh, it comes with an engine, which is basically like a little Rails app that you mount inside of yours um, so that you don't have to manage it as part of your application. It's part inside of the gem. So as we continue developing this application, we're going we're gonna to follow the best practices that Clearance README suggests and actually overwrite this stuff. But for now, we just want to see it work. So we have a sign up, sign in, sign out. These are the, the main three that we're going to be using right now. So if we go to slash sign up in our application, we should see a form. Okay, so email, password. So if we put my email in here, add a password, sign up, we get something except for it redirected us back to the root page, which doesn't have our layout. So that brings us to the stock Rails application again. And what this means is that this page isn't actually rendered through your layout. It's just rendered statically, although it is dynamic because it knows its version and what Ruby version you're using. But we, we don't really want this anymore. So we're going to set up our first actual route controller in view. So in controllers, we want to create a new file. This is going to be called the welcome controller dot RB. It's very important that you spell this properly. So welcome underscore controller. And then that has to match exactly what we put here. And in that uh, our file name is welcome underscore controller. This should be welcome controller uh, with each word capitalized. So we're going to create one action inside of our controller. And this is going to be the show action. And we don't actually need anything inside of this method. So we can just save that. We will now also need to create views. So inside of views, you're going to create a new folder called welcome. This must also match the controller. And then inside of that, we're going to create a new file that is show.html.erb. And this must match our action. And this is just going to say welcome. And save that. And the last thing we need to do to set up our route is we need to go to config and then there's a routes.rb file. And we will say root to colon and then this will go to welcome dollar sign show. And so this is a little bit magic, but this is saying our root URL, so just the slash, is going to point to the welcome controller and the show action inside of the controller. So if we save this and we come back and we take a look at our rake routes again, we now have this one up here that is a root slash goes to welcome show. And if we come up here and refresh the page, you can see that it shows us our welcome stuff and it uses our application layout, putting in my email address here. We can also sign out. Puts us back to a sign in page. And that's pretty much the entire life cycle. There wasn't a whole lot of code in this tutorial, but we did actually succeed at what we wanted to do. And that is, you know, we're not we're not just writing code to write code. We're trying to actually complete features and move this product forward. So 
we managed to create our sign up, sign in, sign out flow. And then we even got some extra freebies involved there with the forgot password and that kind of stuff. So if we look back at the meal plan development, this stuff is going to be done with the pull request that I'm going to open up for this branch. And then I'm, you know, that's going to move its way over into completed. And then we'll have the first couple features done already. Next week, we're going to actually work into recipes and this uh, view, create, edit, delete stuff. Uh, we're not going to use what some tutorials would have you do and use scaffolding and have all that stuff kind of pre-built for you because we want to understand what's going on. So there will be quite a bit of code here. It's going to be pretty simple Rails code if you're familiar with Rails at all. But in terms of actually getting some features out, this will give us something of substance to work on. I hope you like this tutorial. Um, if you did, you know then give it a thumbs up or like it on Facebook. But uh, give me your feedback too. I want to know what direction you would like to see me take these sort of tutorials, if I should just skip these uh, overly simple ones or if this is actually beneficial to you. So let me know what you think.